So I will go up to the store and I will say like, tonight uh, I will get the bubble milk tea and I will drink all the milk tea and then when all the bubbles are still there, I will throw it out. And I was like, really? I go up back to like the same, the same milk tea place and like, oh, well, I don't understand how can people do these kind of things, you know, like, don't you have any bit of common sense? Uh, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, what did you do, Aki? Recently, there was some uh, news here in Taiwan, South African woman, mm -hmm. I believe, yes. who discovered uh, not only U-bikes, but also the Taiwanese highways, uh, unfortunately, at the same time. <laughs> so she was found uh, biking on the highways and being told that you're not allowed to do this. And I actually had an American, uh, Mr. Nick, his girlfriend did the exact same thing. So there was like at least two foreigners recently who has been biking on the highway here in Taiwan and found themselves in situations they should not be in. Have you any uh, interesting, stupid foreigners in Taiwan stories to share, either your own or maybe some uh, anonymous friend. I don't understand how can people do these kind of things, you know, like, don't you have any bit of common sense? That, I mean, it's not, it was at night time. She, I, I saw the photo. It was night time on a U-bike on the highway. How can you believe for even a second that this is okay? And I think the answer she gave to the police is like, Oh, I was following my GPS and they took me, told me to do this. To uh, be honest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, what did you do, Aki? I was riding my scooter and I was following the GPS halfway on the, on the ramp when I noticed that something is wrong. For the scooter, I, I forgive you, Aki, because <laughs> Thanks. I, I actually think in Taiwan, in a lot of places, it's super confusing. Yeah. I have seen places where you, you're not really sure, like normal street is going both ways around the ramp to go to the highway. Like if you happen to be at the mm. wrong place or yeah. a car is doing a move next to you, you might really do this. And of course, uh, on a scooter, you go faster than a, a bicycle. So you have less time to, to think. So, okay, to un understandable <laughs> for the scooter, not understandable for the <laughs> U-bike. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other uh, stories though? I, I can share one story like where I was the stupid foreigner, uh, even though it's not as stupid as that. <laughs> that's clearly like the podium. I was in Miaoli and I was planning to go from Miaoli to some hot spring in the mountains. It was not in the city center of Miaoli. It was, it was a village already a bit out of Miaoli. And checking Google GPS, it's 20 minutes on a taxi. So we get this taxi guy and ask for the price and he says i think back then it was five or six hundred and t for 20 minutes in the countryside and i thought that's that's a, that's totally stealing you know because <laughs> in taipei i take the the taxi quite often back in that time maybe it was 200 and t so i'm clearly thinking he's trying to get my money i'm a foreigner i don't know anything i said no like not more than 300 and he's like no so we were in the taxi already and we were like we leave the taxi we get out we don't want to deal with this taxi anymore. Mm. And maybe we walk for like, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. We get to the closest 7-Eleven and we try to book a taxi there. <laughs> we book the taxi, the taxi is on the way. The taxi arrives at 7-Eleven. It's the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it turns out in that village, there's only one taxi, you know? <laughs> so at that time, you feel super awkward, like, damn, it's the same one, what do we do? So in the end, we got in a taxi and we paid exactly that amount. He was asking for like five or six hundred and then just just leave the taxi and try to forget about this, you know. <laughs> so on the perspective of the taxi driver, he must have thought we were so stupid, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so my personal story is like the whole like how to order like bubble milk tea, which I've already told like like so many times. But like like the first time I heard like Chenzhou Nai Cha, I had no idea like what I was, what it meant. I just knew that if you go to a bubble milk tea store, you get bubble milk tea. No one is talking about milk tea. Everyone mm. is talking about bubble milk tea. And I, I like the milk tea, but I hate the bubbles. So I would go up to the store and I would say like Chenzhou Nai Cha. I would get the bubble milk tea and I will drink all the milk tea, and then when all the bubbles are still there, I will throw it out because I, I don't like the bubbles. And I thought it was like it was a, a set thing, you know. Did this for like six months. He's kind of slow. <laughs> kind of slow. No, but this is the thing though. This is the thing though. Taiwanese people, but it gets worse. Taiwanese people are so nice. So for six months, let's say three times a week, I'll go up 
And like I always just order like Tinto Night Tar. And like occasionally some friends will like see me finish it like to the bubbles and then throw it. And then I will say like, I don't like the bubbles. But they would not like, they will not even think about telling me that well, next time, maybe you could have like not ordered like <laughs> bubbles, you know. But then after six months of doing this, I, I just tell my uh, my Chinese teacher that like, when she want tenchu nai cha, then she will want tenchu, so we will wait. And then she was like, what? What are you talking about? Like, you And I was like, really? I go up back to like the same, the same milk tea place. And like, oh, well, for another six months. He's a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> so ordering like again, twice a week for six months. Uh, and no one, not a single person, is telling me that just tell, say like Naicha, and it will be faster for everyone. You don't have to go through this like. And I was, I got like, uh, I got a scholarship at Sida for my good Chinese studies. You know, like imagine. You studied in the U.S., right? <laughs> yes, exactly. This was this was after my six months in the U.S. Yes, here in Liu Changli, just like. Maybe two months ago, there was this this poor this poor poor girl uh, exchange student. Based on her accent, she was from France, obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's just assume she had been to like Din Taifeng before. I will give her that. She probably has been to like Din Taifeng before. She goes to Bafang Unji, ordering some dumplings. She goes up and she says, "I want one number one and one number two. And then the lady is like, "What are you talking about? I want one number one and one number two. The, the lady, the clerk, she's pointing at like the, the shui jiao and like guo tie. So it's like the, the boiled and the, the fried dumplings, mm. right? And she's like, which one do you want? And she has like no idea. <laughs> the lady goes into the freezer and she holds up like the, the frozen shui jiao and, and like guo tie. And then she was like, which one? And then she was like pointed at the guo tie. She wants the original and like curry, I think. That was like mm. what she means by number one and number two on the menu. So then she's like, she sees the curry and she explains like she wants one. The clerk, she was like, how many do you want? And she's like, I want one number one and one number two. And then she was like, she just holds up like, like two, <laughs> two gun dumplings. And she's like, one, one. And she's like, no, no, no. One box. One box of number one, one box of number two. So she thought you ordered it by box. And then she gets like, she gets like a separate box with like one Gauthier original. And then one box with one Gauthier like curry. And then she's like, oh, no, 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 no. One box, six. And like she wanted like six per box. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And it was like one of those moments is like just standing behind all of this. Of course I didn't say anything. I'm like a sweet. So I'm just not like, helping at I'm all. I'm not helping at all. I was just, just, just I was writing down there. everything for a video. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about this for 200,000 subscribers. I'm sure I've done something similar as well that I can't really remember right now. Yeah, I have memories of something like this I forgot, but yeah, sometimes it's not easy because it's a different mindset, it's different rules that you would not expect. At the bank, I also realized I have been to the bank and asked many times to do something and they have always done it for me. And even a couple of times I have asked, can I do this myself mm. online with the app? And they told me no. For this, you need to go to the bank and do this. And recently I found out my colleague was doing this himself on the app. And now I, I can't do myself on the app. <laughs> so even though you ask, sometimes they still tell you, no, you cannot do it. I had to pay like my first rent, like cash. Yeah. And the thing was like, because then you like, if you first come here, you get like the post uh, card. So like you can take out money at the ATM. You cannot do like wire transfers mm. if you're like a, a student. And then I had to pay like, I had to take out the money cash. And I did the same thing. I went to the bank to like deposit like 15,000 to the lady, but you can do it like in the ATMs, right? Like yeah. you can put money there. Sweden don't have these like cash ATMs. Like I did not know this was a thing before coming here to, to deposit money. Yeah, to mm. like the deposit money. Yeah, and like Sweden in general, like we don't do do cash at all. Oh. Like like, I just went back here for like two, for Sweden for two weeks. I did not see a coin, a, a bill ever. Like nothing is cash, nothing. You go on the train, they mm -hmm. will like they will not accept cash. Like a lot of places will not accept cash, because of like the the risk of robbery. Seriously? Yeah, like they don't even have like the the coin machine, like the the change. You know, they just have an, an iPad, and it says like your card or phone, and we have this app like Line Pay, basically. They will not accept uh, cash. 
in Germany, we avoid uh, losing our cash. All this uh, electronic payment thing is so insecure for us Germans. We think you could get hacked or it could get stolen somewhere if someone knows your password. So we think cash is way safer. Than mm. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. One thing uh, I suddenly realized is also my first three or four years in Taiwan, I have He's paid a little bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> I think my first four years in Taiwan, I paid my rent by going to the ATM and doing a transfer to my landlord's account on the ATM. So you say ATM mm. function, you type the number of the landlord bank account, the amount. So one day I mentioned this to my friends, like, hey, oh, I have to go to the ATM to pay my rent. And they just tell me, why don't you do a scheduled transfer? And then I realized you can not only do transfer with your bank, but you can do scheduled transfer. So on the first day you start moving in the apartment, you schedule it for the next 12 months and that's it. Peace of mind. You don't have to go and do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying to think like if there was any like stupid foreigner things in Sweden, there's a lot of things. They just assume that you have an app. You know, I got stuck like this lady just thought I was like bullshitting her. So I took a train from like my in the middle of the Swedish forest, mm. like the, it's the tiniest like uh, train station. And I wanted to go into like the big city. There was one train that was like super delayed. So I ended up on that train, although I didn't have a ticket for that train. But I thought it was that train because it was so delayed. So the time was like almost the same. Mm. So, and there was one train there. So I went on it. And then I was like, oh, I realizing now that I'm on the wrong train. You just give me the original ticket, you get the money back and we buy a new ticket. Because okay. in Sweden, you have to go through all the different steps. You cannot just like, mm. you're going to the exact same place. Just, it's fine. Like, no, we have to like refund you and then we buy another one. And then I was like, so how do I buy a ticket? And then she was like, you use the app. <laughs> and I'm like, like what app? Like what app? And I was like looking around as well, like in this little, like right inside the doors in the train. Like there's no sign anywhere. And then she's like, you just use the app. And I'm like, which app? She's like, oh, it's, it's this company. And I'm like, okay. Uh, so I don't have the app. Like I need to download it. And I was on my way into the city to buy my SIM card to get internet. So I was like, I don't have internet. And then she was like, oh, Okay, there's like, there's Wi-Fi in the train. Oh, what's the password? I'm like, oh, you don't know. <laughs> and then like, we had to like, we had to go to another card where the Wi-Fi password was. This whole complicated thing, you know? And I was like, if this would have been in Taiwan, it would have just been like, oh, you have a ticket for the next train? No problem. Like, of course, you're going to the same place. Mm. No problem. So I feel like in Sweden, you will notice the stupid foreigner situations much faster because the Swedes will just be like, you are wrong. I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to help you until you're right. It's hard when you're not in the system, I yeah. think. Always. Yeah. I was in Taiwan for around a year and I went clubbing usually every week. That one night I was like, I'm too lazy to walk home. So I wanted to take the taxi to Tonghua Yesu. And the taxi driver drove and drove and drove. And when we arrived, he said, here's Tonghua Yesu. And I didn't recognized the place so I thought he scammed me for like 300 Taiwan dollar and let me out somewhere else and I was like no I'm not going to pay this and you let me out somewhere strange and I'm going to take another taxi and went off the taxi without paying him oh yeah and then I realized I was on the other end of Tonghua Yesu awkward moment that's bad yeah, yeah awkward moment bad. and that it's was foreigners like you that make us all look bad Aki <laughs> yeah, I, feel, I still feel horrible that I didn't pay him, but it really was weird because I didn't recognize the other side of Tonghua Yesu. And then a more recent story was with my wife. So I had a rash on my eyelid and she gave me the address you to... You had a what? A rash. A rash on... My eyelid. Oh, your eyelid. Oh. Yeah, weird place, I know. Anyway, she gave me the address to a doctor and I went there, arrived, just went inside without even considering that it could be the wrong doctor asked for didn't, didn't we just say that if you go to a hospital in taiwan there's papers and they check everything and, and there cannot be any mistakes it's not a hospital it's just the average small doctor oh, okay. and this was my mistake because i didn't even look at the sign i just went inside it's hard to see if you had a rash on your eyelid though. You, know, like, you have an excuse for not seeing the sign <laughs> <laughs> there's my excuse <laughs> yeah i went inside he gave me um, eye drops and medication and everything i went home and three days later my eyelid was still going much worse it was itching and stuff and my wife was looking at the back and saying why doesn't he doesn't didn't he give you anything stronger or better and then she realized i went to the wrong doctor the doctor i had to go to was right next to it the first doctor was like for eyesight the one for skincare is right next to me oh so you wanted to go through a skincare doctor and not yeah. an eye doctor yeah Oh, okay. But did you see better though afterwards? No, I didn't. No, okay. <laughs> so it was, it was still a 
not good. I think your stories were much funnier. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't funny at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. That was everything we had to talk about today. But if you have any more news or updates or anything else Taiwan related that you may or may not want to hear some foreigners opinions about, please do reach out to our social media or just leave a comment down below. And maybe we'll talk about that in the next episode. But if you cannot wait until then, you actually have another video right here and another one right here, which you both can watch right now. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with L as in like, ends with S as in subscribe. Please to both and see you all in the next one.